All right, welcome back. Uh, we are uh, doing a special series on the top 12 at each position uh, through the IDP Plus podcast. Uh, my name is Nathan. I am joined with Brandon and Johnny. How are you guys doing today? Oh, uh, live and healthy, fellas. Happy to be here. Likewise, awesome. man. Like, yeah, yeah. looking forward to the warmer weather, but uh, yeah. we got playoffs. Dude, it's yeah. been snowing four days straight here, man, up in New York. It's crazy. Yeah, it's been cold here, too. Uh, so in this episode, we are going to talk through the top 12 offense by position. So we're going quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. And uh, I, I'm just excited to get into this list and the uh, you know feedback we had from the IDP uh, by positions was, was great. So looking forward to this next video. But before we get into all of that, uh, let's get a little information on our hosts today. Uh, Johnny Freakin' Fantasy. Let everyone know, like, what's up with you? Like, where, um, where are you posting content? What's, what's your team? All that jazz. So you can find me on Twitter. I've been on Twitter since 2018. Uh, my, my tag is at Johnny Freaking F1 that you see there on the screen. Um, I do basically. I do uh, week, week weekly waiver wire pickups. I do start sits. Um, people reach out to me. They ask for recommendations on. It's mostly IDP questions, but some offense too. Um, I started playing IDP in 2012, so I've been familiar with it for over 10 years, over a decade now. So those are a lot of questions that I get. Um, you know, mostly on IDP, but hey, offense. I've been playing longer since 2010, so uh, I'm very versatile and. Uh, I, I am usually getting quick um, replies back to questions because I don't have too many followers yet, but uh, I'm working on that with the IDP plus and uh, Nathan and Brandon here and looking forward to giving it a go. Nice. Brandon, where do they find you? What, what are you up to these days? Yes, sir. Absolutely, man. Like I said, happy to be here. What's up, beautiful people? It's your boy, Brandon Blakey, AKA Brandon Lee TV. You can find me on all social media platforms at Brandon Lee TV. Uh, currently host two podcasts. Uh, my feature one is live with Brandon Blakeney. So talk about the biggest topics in all of sports. Um, then I host another one called Dukes of the Gridiron, which is a Duke football podcast. But with Duke being uh, on the shelf right now, we're talking everything college and NFL football and doing the same thing here with you guys, man. So just happy to be here. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a sad Panthers fan uh, right now. So I'm just making it through right now. Nice, nice, yeah. Uh, and my name is Nathan, Nate, at Nate Sheet on Twitter. Uh, and you can find me generally behind the computer making sure everything runs and works over there at idpguys.org. But I am doing this video series with these guys and, uh, you know, hopefully hoping to do some more stuff in the future, um, keeping it going. But, you know, speaking of IDP guys and IDP plus, which you might be seeing at the top of the screen there, you know, we're in this little transition rebrand. Um, go to idpguys.org. We pull, we've posted these, uh, top 12 lists as articles with more information on rationale behind, you know, why, uh, they were picked and everything. And also utilizing tools such as our, um, weekly fantasy fantasy finishes tool, which I will be utilizing it for some of the questions that I'm asking today, uh, looking at where players, uh, have landed this year as opposed to this list, which is a dynasty list. Um, so there's going to be some, some differences there, which we're going to talk about, but go to idpguys.org, become a subscriber, use the promo code IDP plus pod and get 10% off your subscription. Uh, you know, great year round content, dynasty content, dynasty tools, a uh, lot of great stuff coming, uh, as the year progresses. But with that, let's get into our first list. And we're going with top 12 quarterbacks by Joseph Harlow at Joe Low 63. And for our audio listeners, I'm going to go through this list real quick. Uh, at number one, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert, CJ Stroud, Joe Burrow, Dak Prescott, Jordan Love. Coming in at 10, Anthony Richardson, Trevor Lawrence, and rounding it out at 12, Kyler Murray. So, you know, looking at this list, taking it in for the first time, uh, Brandon, so Jared Goff finished the year at seven. Matthew Stafford just outside at, at 15. 
both in the top half of quarterbacks this season, but left off this list. What do you need to see from these guys to be added? You know, is is Matthew Stafford just too old? Uh, Jared Goff could get an extension uh, and played lights out this year. What what would make the list for you uh, if they were to you know do the thing? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so honestly, I think after Jared Goff's season last year, he should be on this list, and he followed it up with another banger this season, leading a resurgence in Detroit, man. Um, his numbers last year uh, were very, very similar to Josh Allen's, who were number one, who's number one on this list right now. Um, so I think he's already earned a place on this list, to be honest with you. Um, and as far as Matthew Stafford, I think, yeah, it's just the age thing at this point. Um, you know, you're seeing him still maintain that level of consistency and reliability. He doesn't miss games, but there's not much upside left. You know, he's as good as he's going to be right now. Um, but, you know, if you're thinking one to two years, he's absolutely a guy that, you know, you look at and feel like you could start him and he could lead you to a championship. You know, they've got some new weapons that have developed. So love what I'm seeing. And, you know, I'm up here in New York, Rochester, Buffalo area. So the love for Josh Allen is real. And I do not want to offend any Bills fans because I love Josh Allen. He's an elite quarterback. And I think he gets the dub over uh, the Chiefs to that tonight. But, man, I just don't see how you cannot have Lamar Jackson at number one right now. It's just – you know, the you don't even have to go through it. I mean, if you watched the game last night, like what we're seeing from Lamar Jackson this season is just incredible, and he's wrapping up his second MVP season. Nice. So where 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 do you land with this, uh, Johnny? As far as like what you're seeing from this list, and and do you think that Jared Goff uh, is left out? Uh, potentially, I think I think uh, to answer your question before, he's more left off this list than uh, Matt Stafford is because just frankly, due to age, I think Stafford might be guaranteed, not even guaranteed one more year, you know, but I do think he comes back for at least one more. Um, Jared Goff, I do like a lot. He could definitely be on this list. Um, I'm not sure if I heard whispers about uh, would it would it be offensive coordinator in Detroit maybe leaving? I, you know, he's got so Ben Johnson's got a few um, interviews going on, but you know, he's got to get hired, so he yeah. could leave, but hopefully, he doesn't. I'm crossing my maybe fingers. that's scaring you know, uh, Joe away. Maybe that's in his rationale of why he left him on the, off this list. Um, you know, to me, I'm not too worried about it. He's progressively getting better in Detroit. Amon Ross St. Brown had a, a standout year, he had his most touchdown receptions uh, of his career. He keeps getting better. Uh, now we have Jameer Gibbs, a passing back. You know, sometimes it's, you know, if it, maybe if it was Saquon Barkley, I might say it might take some value away. But with um, Jameer Gibbs there being able to take the pressure off and go for quick dump offs, I think it's a really good um, system there in Detroit. And uh, I definitely think he could be on this list as, as a top 12 quarterback. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it no secret that i am a huge detroit lions fan so get ready there's going to be a few of those questions peppered throughout all of these lists um but shifting over to a uh you know conference rival uh and looking at dak prescott there at number eight um dak had nine games as a qb2 uh or or less um is he still valued at eight? Like, do you think he might be a candidate for being left off this list after how he looked, uh, not only in the playoffs, but, you know, a few of those games or, and with the, um, you know, Mike McCarthy didn't get fired, you know, that they, they've have some problems there. Uh, Johnny, what do you think is Dak Prescott on this list because of a name value or does he truly deserve it? I think it's a, a complicated question. I think Dak Prescott, I mean, he turns 31 in July. You're probably thinking you have an, a solid two or three more years left out of him, which is fair. It's reasonable to, to expect. Uh, I think it also is maybe jaded in the sense of the fact that C.D. Lamb's there, right? And he's only getting better each year. And we expect him to maybe even be wide receiver one uh, next year, has that potential. So I think that that tie to him and the fact that you see other guys stepping up, Ferguson in that offense, 
Uh, I think that it's, it's, it's a well-rounded offense. Mike McCarthy being, you know, the coach again next year helps. Um, I'll draw up some stats on you because I'm kind of twisted with this one. Dak Prescott, he missed six games from 2021 to 2022. Um, in, in 2023 this year, he led the league in touchdowns, right? And last year, 2022, he led the league in interceptions. So I'm kind of torn with it. Um, the, the Also, some numbers that are, are misleading is in, this year he had his most passing yards uh, in the last three years. He had his most rushing attempts and yards over the last three years. Um, and he had also had his least amount of interceptions in the last three years this year. So to me, it's tough to gauge because these numbers aren't very consistent. Uh, if he led the league in passing touchdowns, you know, five last five years, different story. Now he was up there. Uh, I want to say a year or two ago, I think he was second in the league in, in touchdowns. Um, but to me, th the numbers are everywhere, you know, and, if you're taking age into consideration, I would knock him down uh, outside the top 10. Um, but if you think that he's going to repeat what he did this year for the next two or three, he deserves eight. Yeah, I agree. Um, if you're looking at Dak, guys, he when he floundered and he had a bad game, he really stunk it up. But we're talking about a guy that threw 36 touchdowns this year, like Johnny was saying, like, this was a dang near career year for Dak. Like, he had a superb season. He was top five in most major stats for quarterbacks when you're looking at yards, TDs, interceptions, completion percentage, and stuff like that. Um, you know, there was a time, I'd say probably even up to like three weeks ago, where a lot of people were looking at the Cowboys as the favorite to take the NFC, and possibly it felt like this was that year that they could get to the Super Bowl. Um, I know I was drinking the Kool-Aid just a little bit. I had a few sips um, myself, but I think, you know, Dak is getting on the, uh, the age side of things, but it seems like, you know, there, there's no reason that he should struggle. Like, it's in the biggest games, the brightest lights, he seems to struggle, but the level of talent surrounding him on both sides of the ball are ridiculous. Um, you know, it's just no excuse. He's just got to play better take care of the football. But I think next season is going to be personal for him because we're all looking at him like the the cog that's holding this offense back, that's holding this team back right now. So I think this offseason, you know, it's kind of like this might be la a last chance use uh, situation for Dak where it's, you know, him and McCarthy's jobs might be on the line. So I'm looking for a big season at least next year. Yeah, I, I fully agree with that. Next year is going to be uh, very deciding for, for Dallas, uh, especially Mike McCarthy gets to keep his spot. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that if they don't come off, start off strong, uh, McCarthy could end up, you know, uh, getting fired. And, and that puts a lot of questions around Dak and the rest of that season. So uh, I definitely agree with you there. And uh, so, so, Switching gears here a little bit, uh, and this question goes to you, Brandon, is, um, you know, Anthony Richardson, he's number 10 here, and he he played four games this year, uh, but of those four games, two of them, he was a top five quarterback, uh, you know, for that, for fantasy points uh, those weeks. What did he show during those games that makes him worthy of being in the top 10 here uh, and on this list? Well, you mentioned it, you know, the upside is just incredible. If you're, you're, if you're a league that values dual threat quarterbacks who values rushing touchdowns of that nature, you're going to love a guy like Anthony Richardson. I mean, he's physical, uh, God gifted tools that he's got, man. You know, you're born 6'5", 235, 238, 240 range. Like you're, and you're a quarterback, you know, we're, there's going to be some expectations. I think he's ahead of the curve though. Um, just from the draft we were watching, it was like Bryce Young's the most ready. C.J. Stroud has the most upside. Anthony Richardson is a project. Anthony Richardson was ready to go week one. He was ready to perform. So I love what I saw. I don't know if I can really put him above Purdy or even Bryce Young just because of the small body of work. Like the value is there. I think he has more upside than both of those guys. So it's a hot, not it's a high risk, high reward situation. But how's he going to come back from that injury? You know, are the Colts going to keep building around him? You know, I love Josh Downs. Um, you know, Pierce is good. They got Jonathan Taylor in the backfield. Like, they've got some weapons around him. The offensive line is solid. So, 
I mean, I'd probably have him at – I'd probably have him maybe 11. I'd move Trevor Lawrence above him just because of the body of work. But I absolutely understand the excitement for Anthony Richardson because, like you said, we saw in his small sample size, the kid's a baller. Yeah, what do you think, Johnny? I think it's a big risk, big reward here for Anthony Richardson. Me personally, I'd left him off the list. I want to see what, you know, if he can continue to bring this. Probably can, right? Um, you know, it's I'm I'm being devil's advocate with it. Uh, like I think Brandon mentioned a great name, Brock Purdy. He's on my top 12 too. I think I have him, let's see, I have him at eight. So I like Brock Purdy a lot. Uh, you know, Kyler, Kyler Murray, that's a, a, a risk down there. You know, he could be a franchise quarterback. He could fizzle. He could continue to get injured, you know. So there's a lot of questions down there. Uh, Anthony Richardson's coming off that shoulder surgery. You know, if you're maybe doing a startup draft in Dynasty, maybe you, you know, draft three or four quarterbacks if you have Richardson because you don't know if he's going to be cleared, you know, week one, what kind of complications are there. Um, but I was really – I was surprised uh, the, those first two games, you know, I thought maybe a guy like Michael Pittman is their number one receiver would kind of fall off. Maybe we get some like Cam Newton vibes, you know, like more running than, than passing. He ran a lot, you know, but the, the thing is, is those first two games, uh, Michael Pittman had 23 targets his first two games with Richardson. So I still think that there can be a balanced offense here. Like other guys can still get theirs. Um, I think Richardson, you know, that, that touchdown uh, upside is immense. So if that hits, I think he could be beyond, you know, 10 above it, you know, but uh, I'd like to see the pieces get put together first. I think a lot of the other these these guys on here, Jordan Love, Trevor Lawrence, I mean, Brock Purdy's left off the list. A lot of these guys, even Tua, Tua, Justin Fields not on this list. We talked about golf, you know, so there's uh, a lot of sure, you know, maybe get Jared Goff. If I get five more solid years like he's playing right now, I, I have him ranked above Richardson, you know, nine days out of 10. But uh, he's somebody, if you're, you're looking for youth, you're looking for upside, you want a big splash, he's probably someone you're looking at. Gotcha. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, all right. So, you know, kind of looking at, um, you know, the fantasy finishes tool on idpguys.org. And, you know, it ranks uh, overall for the season, like the top uh, quarterbacks that, you know, scored points. And then looking through the weeks, you know, I noticed that, you know, that first week, a lot of those top guys just had duds. Uh, and so for you, Johnny, um, how important is week one when you evaluate a player on your fantasy team? Like, are you looking past that? Are you just kind of like trying to um you know hope that your guys perform like what what do you do when you go into your season and uh and it's week one and these guys just aren't performing i think it's a little bit different you know uh say if you have like i'll give you a good example joe burrow number seven on this list joe burrow is somebody that really stunk it up the first couple weeks i think it was beyond week one you know first maybe yeah. three weeks but uh yeah, his, his arrow to me isn't really changed much. That trajectory tra trajectory isn't changed much. I mean, I still uh, rock with Joe Burrow when he was there. I still kept him on my team. Of course, it was a little bit discouraging. Um, you know, when, what, when you have a guy like Patrick Mahomes, who was the, you know, top scoring uh, quarterback just a year ago, now you, you know, you see him, you pick him, and then you get a sour taste in your mouth. He's not lighting the world on fire. So, uh, you know, maybe if, if you had Anthony Richardson on your bench, you're, you're pissed off. But to me, um, no, I'm not. You know, my quarterback play, my kind of strategy is with fantasy. Uh, I'll take the Jared Goffs. I'll take the Matt Stafford. You know, I'll take the later guys. I'll wait it out because uh, quarterback, you know, it, it could be consistent. Look at Josh Allen, even Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. These guys are top dogs and they've proved that um, by the season's end. But, it, you know, it depends on who it is. If it's uh, – um, Anthony Richardson, and he's stinking it up week one. To me, I might put a little bit more investment in that than like a Joe Burrow, especially with what the type of offense is. You know, if, if Higgins comes back, when you have T. Higgins, you have – same thing with in like in Minnesota. You know, if, when you have Jefferson, you have Addison, you have Hawkinson. When the, when the offense is built like that, I think it's easier to look past too. Gotcha. What do you think, Brandon? Yeah, Johnny, you weren't kidding about Joe Burrow, man. That's my guy in my fan or my dynasty league. And 
man, that first four or five weeks, I was looking at Joe Burrow like the Bengals are broke. Like, what's going on? Never thought of cutting them, but I did have to bench him one game for Danny Dimes, and that didn't work out too well either. That's a whole other conversation, though. <laughs> but, man, I'm looking at this thing, and I feel like next season is going to be the Joe Burrow revenge tour. I think he's going to come back and light the league on fire. I think seeing him at seven, I get it. Like, we're a little down on him right now, but it's borderline disrespectful, man. We're talking about a guy who's still on the right side of 30, who just even last season was the number two quarterback in this uh, – in the league, honestly, man, we were calling uh, we were calling it Burrowhead. Like you know, he was he was all he was everywhere. Um, you know, he's already been to a Super Bowl. Like I'm just looking at Burrow, and I just think he's gonna come out firing. T Higgins, you got to get him back healthy. That was another guy I had on my team. Definitely got to get T Higgins back. But Burrow's a guy that I think's gonna be in the top three, top four on this list. People forget, man. Burrow gets rushing touchdowns too. He's you know he's not gonna blow you away with his speed, but He's mobile enough to pick up those yards, you know, when you need them. Um, I think Justin Fields, depending on his situation, is a guy that could find himself on this list. Um, I would love to see him if they are going to end up getting rid of him and getting Caleb Williams. I'd love to see Justin Fields in a place like Atlanta. I think if he goes there and teams up with that young roster with Drake London and Bajan, I think, you know, he's a guy that could be a top 10 quarterback potentially. Um, I, I love the upside of Stroud. Can he do it two years straight? You know, we were kind of looking at Trevor Lawrence. Like, you know, he was one of my quarterbacks in my Yahoo league. And I thought, you know, after last season, how he led the Jags, he would take that next leap to be a top, you know, six to eight guy. And he just completely regressed this year, guys. Uh, so, you know, um, I think this list has a, a good balance, though, of win now, guys, and upside when you think about – Jordan Love, you know, he's a guy that I saw when I was covering Wake Forest in North Carolina, and he was at Utah State. He came up there a couple times, and, you know, he's a guy that waited his turn and obviously benefited from studying under Aaron Rodgers. So um, I think overall it's a solid list. I'd maybe move some people out, swap some things around, but it's solid. Nice. There it is. All right. So, you know, talking about, um, you know, the NFL playoffs and, and we're in it right now. You know, we've got um, a time of recording. We're, we're in the divisional weekend and games are happening. And with that is, you know, this goal to get to the Super Bowl, to get that that hardware of the Lombardi trophy. And, you know, it's not too late for your fantasy team. Like, I know that, you know, it's all over. Playoffs have happened. You know, we're all sitting on the couch, you know, just watching these games. But, you know, you've got your guys, your your um, your fantasy uh, friends that you're in a league with. And, you know, you guys should get some hardware, too. You know, you should end the year with something really nice, like a trophy smack belt or trophy or the ring that they offer even for the losers they have you know a nice singlet you know you could send them out in the cold to uh to go you know stand on the corner with a sign about how they suck or uh you know a, a toilet bowl trophy you know they've got a ton of great stuff so go to trophysmack.com and use the promo code idp guys to get a free ring when you purchase some hardware uh for your fantasy league uh for yourself even or hey you know it doesn't have to be fantasy football related you know if you've got a uh, a corporate event or anything like that where you want to give away a really awesome gift i mean these things have some weight to them and if you look here you know this was for a uh a tournament a beer pong tournament that uh i i placed in i won and uh, with my co, uh, co-player co and I, you know, we left with some hardware and you can too. So go to trophysmack.com and use IDP guys promo code. What about you guys? Have you, you guys have any hardware that you really, uh, you know, uh, you really love that you win each year for your fantasy leagues or, or you keep up on the wall? Oh yeah. Yeah. We have a trophy for my, my one IDP league with some of my fraternity brothers. We've been doing it since 2012. You know, you see the plaques that get added to it from the teams every year. Um, and Nathan, very impressed, man. I see you got the wrist work with the palm too, man. Salute to you. 
absolutely uh what about you johnny i see stuff on your on your wall back there you've got to have some hardware somewhere oh man yeah these are uh these are my my room trophies here you know i got jerry rice luke keekley dan marino johnny manzel over there too um these are yeah, these are my wall league. trophies you know i got my name inscribed on our on our uh 10 year league you know we've, we've had it since 2012 the trophy and uh, my name's on there a few times, but uh, it's cool because it gets sent from North Carolina, South Carolina. We got guys all over the place. So FedEx, you know, shout out to FedEx and UPS for that. Nice. Feels good to see your name on the plaque, man. I can relate. Yeah, that's just as good as winning sometimes, more than the yeah. money. Yeah. There we go. All right. So let's get into uh, the top 12 running backs now. This one is from our guy here, Brandon Black Blakeney, uh, at Brandon Lee TV. Uh, and Hey, we're, you know, kind of taking a little tangent here. We've been talking about a lot of guys who've been writing for us, writing these top 12s. And there's a lot that goes into this list. And, you know, it's, it's not something, you know, we're not trying to go out there and, and rip them apart or anything. They're, they're all opinions, but Hey, we got one of them on the show today. So let's, let's tear into this thing. Yes, please do. <laughs> please do, man. I want honest, unbiased, I know I've sent this list out to a couple guys, too, a um, couple players as well um, that I'm familiar with. And, you know, I got pretty good feedback from the list. The biggest question, and I'm sure maybe you guys, too, are wondering, you see number 12. You see Derrick Henry right there. And there were some alternates I had, you know, uh, Pollard, Rashad White. There were some guys that could have been in that 12 spot. Um, the thing with Derrick Henry, man, he's all reliable, man. I, I like to think of him as like he's a battering ram, but he's also like a Toyota Camry. You take care of it, it takes care of you. You know, he's been healthy. He's continued to improve. Um, what scares me is we don't know where he will end up next season. That's my only thing, um, and I get that. And I get a lot of people may not have him at 12 or on this list. Because of that fact, he could end up in a timeshare. We don't know. But I think he's been the most consistent running back on this list over the last, you know, six to eight years. He He's pretty much lived up to the name King Henry. So that's my spill on why I have Derrick Henry there. Just reliable consistency. Mm -hmm. I tried to have a balance of win now, but also set yourself up for the future. And I think Derrick Henry is a guy that could potentially, you know, help you out tremendously in the next two to three seasons if he ends up in a nice spot, which it could be a better situation than the Titans. You know, we don't know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, so for our audio listeners, I'm going to go through this list. Uh, at number one, we got Christian McCaffrey, B. John Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, Travis Etienne, Brees Hall, Saquon Barkley, Jonathan Taylor, Kyron Williams, James Cook, Devon Achan, DeAndre Swift, and at number 12, Derrick Henry. Uh, Brandon, you know, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head with my first question here. Uh, so I'm going to shift it over to Johnny and I'm going to say, is there a landing spot that moves Derrick Henry up this list or off of this list, uh, in your mind? Definitely. I mean, let's say he goes to Minnesota, you know, and, and Madison's not there. Uh, Ty Chandler, I don't think the Minnesota's too invested in him. I do think he's a good piece to keep there. Um, but, you know, we're talking about Minnesota. They're probably pissed off. They, I think what, uh, I don't even think that uh, Madison had over five rushing touchdowns. I, I, that might have been, you know, absolutely short. He might have only had a couple, a handful, you know, but they're probably upset about that. They're uh, looking to say, hey, we have all these offensive weapons now. You know, we have, they do have to maybe find the quarterback, but uh, if, if Kirk Cousins doesn't come back, You'll say, let's say Kirk Cousins comes back. Now they have Jefferson, they have Addison, Hawkinson maybe misses a few weeks there in the beginning. Uh, a guy like Derrick Henry, yeah. I mean, that's touchdowns all day, rushing touchdowns. You get to the goal line. Um, now, you know, twofold, if he goes somewhere, you know, that he's a reserve, um, like at Kansas City. Kansas City could be good or bad. You know, they could use him as a, as a, as a pound or two, goal line back. But, um, you know, if he goes somewhere as like a – just goal line back. I mean, even if he went to Baltimore, let's say, you know, I don't know that, that I'd like it. You know, they, they use uh, many running backs there. I mean, it would have to be a landing spot where they, they make him the featured back or like a, you know, 40, 60% carry type of guy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so Brandon, you know, you were talking about how you put a lot into the thought with Derek Henry of, of this. Do you see like a perfect landing spot for him? 
Yeah, I mean, I agree with Johnny. If he was to go somewhere like the Minnesota Vikings, where we saw the success that Dalvin Cook had there, like they love to run the football, and they don't have a guy. They gave Ryan Madison the chance to be the guy, and he proved he was not the guy. Um, so they have a void there. But, yeah, I'm definitely looking at a place like that where he could be the featured back. Um, you know, if he ends up in a time – I don't want to see him in a timeshare, though. I definitely want to see somewhere – you know, if he was to go to the Chiefs, um, you know, that could be hit or miss. I think, you know, I, I want to see somewhere where they really need him. Maybe the Chicago Bears. You know, they've got some money to spend. Maybe they go out there and throw a bag at Derrick Henry. Somewhere where, yeah, he's going to be the man. I would like to see him go somewhere where um, they're going to compete, though. You know, if he joins the Minnesota Vikings, I think, you know, they pick right back up where they left off last season, where, they, you know, they're, um, you know, a top three, four team in the NFC um, with that running game, I think Derrick Henry could have a thousand yard year with them. I could see him having, you know, multiple uh, double digit touchdown seasons with them. If he ends up in there, I think Minnesota would be ideal. Um, maybe Chicago, um, you know, teams like that, that really struggled in the run game. Yeah, he could definitely stay out of the NFC North. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, I do like the Lions uh, run defense and everything. So, you know, maybe we can maintain. But, yeah, I don't want to go up against him twice a twice a season. So, uh, but, okay, speaking of someone else that is uh, at, the, at the top of this list, Christian McCaffrey, um, he was easily the most valuable player in fantasy this year just with where he was getting taken and the uh, the points he was putting up. Um, he had, what was his run of touchdowns per game? Like, didn't he string together like 12 or 13 games of, of touchdowns per game? Like, ridiculous. Like, mm -hmm. you could just set your clock to it. He was going to have a, a touchdown that game. Um, how much gas, and this one I'll, I'll send to you, Brandon, um, how much gas do you think is left in that tank? Do we have three, four years left of Chris McCaffrey being this uh, amazing number one uh, running back? Fellas, I think we see the perfect example of how a change of scenery can elevate you because, you know, Christian McCaffrey's probably not number one on this list two years ago. He had some great years with my Carolina Panthers, but it seemed like, you know, he was starting to tail off a little bit. You know, he gets to go back home um, on the West Coast, gets to play for San Fran, and he's completely – rejuvenated and hit that second win in his career. This is the healthiest he's been. You know, he's not having to um, be just overutilized. They're so smart with getting him in space, being creative. Coach Shanahan and those guys getting him the football in just mad creative ways. I think, yeah, I think he's had a second win. I think we, we could see this run go for another three to four years, the way that they're using him. I think it'll also depend on, though, like, are they going to keep guys like Brandon Ajuk? Are they going to be able to keep this offense intact? Some of these guys are going to have to pay. But it, the way it's looking right now, man, yeah. I mean, they have him in the receiving game. They have him out there just running in space, creating gaps for him. So I think he looks really refreshed, man. He looks really healthy. Nice, nice. Yeah, uh, Johnny, are you are you on that train? Like uh, McCaffrey, let's, let's keep it running for uh, another two, three years. I definitely am, man. I mean – Call it a hot take, but I'm 29 years old. This might be the best NFL running back I've seen in my lifetime. You know, uh, this is – I think they were, I saw a stat, I want to say one year in 1990s. It might have been 1995. It was Emmett Smith. This year uh, he joined that company. Emmett Smith was the last person to lead the league in rushing every single week. Not to say that he had the most rushing yards every week, but he was number one of the season total every, for every week yeah. of that season. Um, so that really impresses me, you know. Uh, he's he's you talk about that leading the league and in, in rushing. Then we look at his receiving, you know, then we look at the dump offs, the catches, the touchdowns, all that. I mean, he's hitting on all cylinders. There's not another player on this list that, that is like that. Bijan Robinson, you know, uh, stock out the roof for the next 10 years. But uh, who knows what happens with head coaching? You know, I, 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 I want to see it first with this young guy. So Christian McCaffrey, I mean, we're talking a guy who's only 27 years old. He's not he's he's on the right side of 30. You know, maybe if he's 30, 31, I look at this differently. But uh, I could see him, in, and this is a system too that's young. You know, it's, if he was in Kansas City with the um, aging Travis Kelsey questions at, at receiver, you know, maybe that's that's a sour taste in my mouth. With San Francisco, 
They've got such a young group there, great coaching. I think they're built for the duration. I mean, I, I think it's a fruitful situation for McCaffrey. And we're talking about a guy, and, and you know, a lot of people say uh, wear and tear. I mean, th this year uh, he he was third in, in rushing attempts for running backs. Derrick Henry was first. He was third, you know, which is which is up there. The last two years, he wasn't even top 10 in that in that regard. So I'm not too worried about, um, you know, load management. I think they do a nice job of, of giving him what he can take. And because they have such a fluid offense, I don't think they really have to lean on him um, as, as compared to maybe some other teams with their running backs. So I, I think Brandon hit it on the head here. Christian McCaffrey at 27. Um, I'm looking for a good three or four, you know, more years like this, barring injury. I think it's a great number one. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I, I like him at number one because it, it seems like that was the easiest choice you probably had to make yeah. in this whole, uh, whole list there, Brandon. Uh, but so I, I see Gibbs at number three there, which you know I might have uh, thoughts compared to that to uh, Bijan Robinson right above him. But I will, uh, you know, say that's probably looking through Honolulu blue sunglasses. Uh, but one guy that uh, has been playing next to Gibbs, uh, you know, Montgomery, David Montgomery there, you know, he's been putting up great numbers uh, through this season. And I think he, you know, c comes in just outside of this list uh, to you, Brandon, did you have any thought to putting David Montgomery in here? Were you, was that in consideration at all? And do you think that, um, you know, there's an argument to be made for both Gibbs and Montgomery in the top 12. I will say this. David Montgomery is the reason I personally don't have Gibbs over Bajon Robinson at number two. The split, I think, I think Bajon Robinson becomes more of the RB1, taking more reps away from his co-star. And Montgomery's, you know, he's he was he he's been delivering, you know, he's scored a lot of touchdowns. He's come. He's still a young guy. He's he's got a second win with the Detroit Lions. He's the perfect complement to Gibbs, you know, running through the tackles. Um, so there was some thought, but Jameer Gibbs is just too good to keep him off the field. Literally, like it's nothing about Montgomery, but you look at it. He had like I think I, he had a significant less amount of carries. It's in the article, but significant less amount of carries than Bajan Robinson, and only finished with thirty one less yards. So, you know, you're looking at a guy like Gibbs. I just think he's he's too good to keep off the field. And that's the thing with Montgomery. I think it, it gets a bigger – I think it's more of a 60-40 split next year. I, don't, I think Gibbs has a chance to take over that number one spot and be more than just a, a scat back or a complimentary piece because he's shown he could be a three-down back. You know, he can run through the tackles. He's explosive. He doesn't need a lot of room. He reminds me of like a young Alvin Kamara, the way he mm -hmm. just – it's hard to hit him. Like you don't see Gibbs take a whole lot of big hits. He's slimy. He's, he's smooth in space. You know, he uh, he can really uh, straddle that sideline, make guys miss. And he's just slippery, man. So I think he takes a big jump. It was hard between him and Bijan Robinson. Like they're, to me, they're, they're like 2A and 2B. But I think Bijan maybe has a better situation – um, with his running back situation with the carries. Gotcha. So, Johnny, what do you think uh, on Montgomery? Do you think um, that he could get on this list before the season starts, or do you think that, uh, like Brandon says, it's a 60-30, 60-40 split, and uh, he, you know, he, he's going to have significant less uh, stats next year? So I, I can see it going both ways. I mean – uh, do I think that he'll be on this list? Probably not before the beginning of the season. I mean, we're also excluding guys like Josh Jacobs, Javante Williams. Brandon mentioned Rashad White, who I really like. Uh, Kenneth Walker. I know there's some, um, you know, it, there's some risk with uh, Charbonnet there. Pacheco, Nick Chubb are all off this list. So uh, I, I think it's a it, it's a fluid time. You know, I said it before uh, on this podcast last week about how Guys aren't getting, you know, 30 carries. This isn't 2012 when guys are getting 30 carries anymore. So uh, there's there's other guys around there in this league that um, that I think that you can look over him because, you know, he does offer the touchdowns, which is exceptional. But, you know, I do agree with what Brandon said. I think Jameer Gibbs, I mean, they probably wanted to keep him a light load this year, you know, wanted to see what they have in him. 
the fact that, you know, his yards per touch is so great, they probably say, hey, we can put a little bit more on his plate next year. I think that was a smart decision. You, you know, you want to have insurance at the running back position. Um, maybe there's a point in time where Montgomery, you know, he's he can – I don't know his contract situation, but maybe there's a time he wants paid and they're not able to do that, you know. So um, that comes into factor, especially in Dynasty too. But he's not old. Uh, I, I do think that, it, you know, you could make an argument on for Dynasty, him over, you know, Derrick Henry – uh, him over Swift, you know, but to, with me, um, you have to get what you're getting this year. If you don't, mm-hmm. it, you're going to, you're going to regret it. Gotcha. Yeah. Alrighty. All right. Let's switch over to wide receivers here and a uh, big shout out to uh, Brittany Foxworth. Uh, this was one of her first uh, articles with us. Uh, top 12 wide receivers and at B Foxworth 07 on Twitter. Um, but for our audio listeners, I'm going to go through this list real quick. Uh, at number one, Justin Jefferson, CD Lamb, Jamar Chase, Amon Ross St. Brown, AJ Brown, Garrett Wilson, Puka Nakua, Chris Olave, Brandon Ayuk, Tyreek Hill, Drake London, and Jackson, Jackson, Jackson Smith in, in, uh, in Jigba. Thank you. Thank you. I was uh, struggling there. But uh, so we got Jefferson, Justin Jefferson at the top of this list, which, you know, he's been up there uh, multiple years in a row. You know, one of the most valuable wide receivers in the game right now for Dynasty. Uh, but there's a lot of, you know, Kirk Cousins got injured this year. He he went through multiple different quarterbacks, still strung together a thousand yard season. But you know, with the questions around Cousins, uh, if he comes back from that injury, uh, is he the same uh, player? Uh, or, you know, at what point does he move on and does Justin Jefferson end up struggling? Um, can, can he, and this one's going to Johnny here, but can he survive a QB transition? Uh, he, he did okay this year, but he dropped to number 32 of wide receivers in PPR by the end of the season. I definitely think he can rebound off this. I mean, he's a coveted piece for number one. You, your cream rises, and Justin Jefferson, to me, it doesn't really matter who they bring in. Um, we saw with Nick Mullins that, you know, he made terrific, terrific uh, strides quick. You know, it's not – you didn't have Nick Mullins for eight games, ten games. This is, you know, one week to Josh Dobbs, the other week to Nick Mullins, shuffling quarterback room, and he just gets it done. Uh, I do think that what kind of – helps him in this situation is there there is sound uh, uh offense elsewhere you know you do have addison taking tar- taking uh targets and attention you know so it's a double-edged sword there but i think that kind of helps Jeff- justin jefferson you can't put all the attention on on him because then you got guys like addison and hawkinson addison can hit the home run ball so i think that because it's so well-rounded and justin jefferson is the player he is uh, I think, you know, you if, if you don't have him in number one, the lowest he could be is number two. And you could swap him in CD. You know, that's based on preference and, and what you think uh, years to come. Maybe we talked about the DAC situation. That may be no better, you know, for CD in the next five plus years. But, uh, no, I think Justin Jefferson, it doesn't matter who he's with. I think uh, an offseason is, is just what he needs, just what the doctor ordered. Um, get him time to collaborate with the offense and the quarterback. And I, I'll pick him as number one next year. Nice. Yeah, Brandon, what do you think of uh, Justin Jefferson, number one, and, and the rest of this list? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Justin Jefferson is the most electrifying receiver in the league. He's deserving of number one. Um, I think it would be kind of crazy for them not to run it back with Kirk Cousins. Like, why even go through this transition when you've obviously got one of the most electrifying offenses? You should be adding to that, um, not, you know, trying to restart. And I don't think they're going to find a better free agent than Kirk Cousins right now. They're not going to draft anybody better than Kirk Cousins with their pick. So, yeah, I think Justin Jefferson's a guy that can get it done with anybody. Um, but I think Kirk Cousins will be back, and he'll continue to find Jay Jettis. Um, Looking at the rest of the list, like, I, I like it for the most part. I'd probably take out Drake London and uh, Njamba, uh, Njigba, excuse me. Um, I, I would like to see a guy like DJ Moore up there who had a great season, who's had a 1,000 yards every year he's been in the league, who's 26 years old, um, who could be teaming up with Caleb Williams, who is alone and by far the number one receiver on that Chicago Bears team. If they get Marvin Harrison Jr., I think it opens things up even more for him. 
Um, so that's a guy. Um, Nico Collins is another guy I think that should be on this list. Just the trajectory we saw him in year three, year four, have his best season with a good quarterback in um, C.J. Stroud. These guys are going to continue to light things up. I think that the more they get reps in, the more chemistry, the more that Stroud develops, the more that Nico is going to develop. So I think he's a guy that should have been on the list. Um, those were my two big ones um, out of them. Also, I probably wouldn't put Drake London over George Pickens right now. Um, I know the Steelers quarterback situation is messy, but the upside with Pickens is ridiculous. He's just a physical specimen. Um, and we saw him really come on late in the season and see what he could really do. So I'm, I'm interested to see, you know, New Orleans will be something to monitor too with Chris Olave. You know, they have a lot of good receivers in that um, core. I like, um, I'm a big Christian Watson guy. I know he was kind of up and down this year with injuries, but we see what Jordan Love's doing and Watson's a physical specimen. You know, Aaron Rodgers deemed him the baby giraffe for a reason. So a lot of good young receivers that could have been on this list as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you hit on uh, one of the guys that I wanted to bring up uh, that was possibly missing uh, in Nico Collins. So I'm going to shift this one to Johnny and ask, um, you know, without Nico Collins on this, do you, do you think uh, he seems to be developing a good rapport with CJ Stroud and, you know, by, you know, later on in the season, he ends up making it uh, onto this list. He had a really good game uh, in the playoffs here against uh, Baltimore and, um, it, the the game before that uh, wild card game. Yeah, I definitely think it can can uh, sustain, and I do think you know I think uh, Brandon made a great uh, point. I want to point out with DJ Moore being left off the list. I really like him. I really like Nico Collins, and another name maybe left off would be Michael Pittman. You know, but Nico Nico Collins, I definitely think he can pick up where he left off. I mean, you, you see what he did in the playoffs. I mean, even yesterday, uh, the the game that he had, you know, and. Uh, the playoffs as a whole um, specifically, you know, I think what uh, helped him and hurt him at the same time was the presence of tank Dell. And I think that maybe um, Brittany and other people in dynasty that don't hit, have him on top 12, Nico Collins, that is, I think maybe they're, they're looking at tank Dell and to say, ah, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Tank Dell was hurt towards the end of the year. And he probably hopefully returns by the, the new year, you know, by 2024, um, but I do think Nico Collins is definitely at, at not even 25 years old yet. It's a it's a young um, pairing there with him and Stroud. I think it's a great uh, environment for him. I I, I would I think it, it's to look at it and say what has happened. I don't know that he you know is on the the top 12, um, but to say where I think it's going, definitely I think he's on the top 12. Gotcha. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Um, 1,400 yeah. yards, that ain't no joke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're going to continue to throw the ball. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so, and looking at this list, uh, I see, you know, Puka Nakua at number seven. And, you know, I know I was playing mainly redraft this year, and Puka Nakua, he ends the season as uh, a t in the top five uh, wide receivers for in PPR. And I I got him off the waiver wire, you know, week one, week two. Would and this one's to Brandon. Uh, would you consider Puka Nakua the best waiver wire acquisition this year? And in Dynasty, do you think anyone had drafted him? Like, was there uh, any build up to this, or did he really just come out of nowhere and uh, and be this great waiver wire acquisition in redraft and uh, Dynasty? Yeah, he was him and Tutu Atwell, honestly, were both. Uh, Nicole was exceptional, though. Um, he picked up right where Cooper Cup left off. I think he benefited with Cooper Cup being out so long. So I probably personally wouldn't have him as high as seven just because next year I think, um, I think Cup is in for a big year. Um, you know, he's still 30. He missed a lot of games and he's a fresh 30. You know, he's not a guy that's been in the league 12 years, I think he's been in like eight or nine. Um, and he's not a guy that relies on athleticism solely. Like, he's a possession guy. He's, you know, high intangibles. Um, but I think it was an exceptional waiver wire pickup if you went for him early. Because I thought the first couple weeks he was kind of a fluke. But that's the thing with got receivers that play with Matt Stafford. Like, you're, he's going to have a number one guy. And if you are his guy, you're going to benefit. You're going to light it up. Because he's going to find you, you know. I think next year defenses always catch up, though. 
They're going to have more film on Nakua. They're going to be able to study this kid. He's not surprising anybody next year. They're going to absolutely have him circled um, in the scouting report. They're going to be locking in on him. I think he'll see a lot more number one corners next season as he kind of ascends to that 1A and Cup's probably like more of a 1B guy. I think Nakua will get more attention. And so I think he could have a um, lesser impact next season, but I still think he's a really good receiver. I think as long as Stafford's there, he's going to put up numbers because they're going to throw the ball. Um, as far as him being the best waiver wire ad, um, I could agree with that. You know, um, a guy that I got bef- like right after the draft that I saw wasn't drafted that I was really big on um, was Keaton Mitchell out of East Carolina. You know, I watched him a lot in college. So I thought, you know, if he would have got to play the whole season, he could have been up there as well. But, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Puka Nakua, one thing, you know, seeing him play in person, he's a big guy. Like, he is, um, you know, he's got really good hands, and then he's able to break those tackles. So, Johnny, do you think, um, you know, defenses next year really highlight Puka more than they did this year? Uh, Or do you think he's got a good shot of, you know, coming back and still lighting up the league? I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty safe on him. I think that, you know, what Brandon said is is true. You know, there is probably some negative regression there. You know, maybe he – you draft him, say you draft him at seventh wide receiver. He, maybe he is 10 or 12 somewhere in there, falls in that range. But that's okay too. You know, guys fluctuate year to year. I do think that, uh, you know, Cup being out, him being able to establish his rapport with Stafford, I don't think that goes anywhere. You know, like, like Brandon said, if, when you're Stafford's number one guy – I think he will be next year or, you know, the 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 goal is for him to be um, because it takes pressure off cup. It takes hits off cup. They if they can, you know, even have those two receivers just to draw attention, you know, it, it does a whole lot in itself. So I think keeping both of them he- healthy, that's a thing. I don't know if they look at it and say we can throw Puka this many passes next year and, and he's durable. He's built like that. So there probably is some regression there, some evening out. Uh, I still like him a lot. I do think that he was the best, maybe him or his his teammate, Kyron Williams. You know, if he doesn't go on IR, yeah. those two are the best uh, free agent pickups. So I, I do like Puka a lot. I, I still think that, um, you know, especially if in, in Dynasty, you know, and to go back to your question before, maybe that's – I don't think he was drafted in all Dynasty leagues, but right where he was, I think it was the opportunity, you know, and that's a, a paramount thing in this takeaway is opportunity if if – he's their number two receiver to start the year. You know, the, the sky's looking green for him. I know he was a fifth round pick and that's maybe why he snuck under the radar, but uh, I picked him up in redraft leagues before the season even started. Yeah. I actually told a friend to pick him up. I didn't have the roster spot. So I told a friend, Hey, pick him up. You know, and I actually had to trade back for him and, and gave him Jalen hurts, but uh, that's a story for another time. But yeah, I think Puka's here. He's here for real. I think a good comparison with with the regression stat is him looking at someone also like a Rashad White at, at running back, you know, someone who was a, a surprise this year who probably is focused on a little bit more next year and due for a little bit of regression. Gotcha. All right. Let's let's uh, let's move on to our last position here, which is uh, the top 12 tight ends. This is by Sean Teague, uh, at Sean 8386 on Twitter. Uh, for our audio listeners, we're going to start it off at number one with TJ Hawkinson, Sam Laporta, Trey McBride, Mark Andrews, Dalton Kincaid, Travis Kelsey, Kyle Pitts, George Kittle, David Njoku, Evan Ingram, Cole Komet, and Jake Ferguson. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of movement from last year to this year in some of those older names of Travis Kelsey and George Kittle, uh, Mark Andrews falling. Um, you know, Mark Andrews still in the top four. But we've, we've got some new names on this list um, and some people kind of making a resurgence with, you know, Evan Ingram there in, at 10. But um, going to you, Brandon, uh, Sam Laporta posted three number one tight end weeks versus Hawk and Kels, who only had two. Uh, he ended the season as the number one tight end, uh, is younger than Hawk and has less QB issues. Should he be the number one? And I got to ask this, and Sean, I hope you're listening because I know you expected this question to come up. But, Brandon, do you think uh, Sam Laporta over TJ Hawk, or is this correct? I think it, it strongly, strongly depends on if Kirk Cousins comes back. 
I'm big on TJ Hawk, though. Spending years out in um, North Dakota, Minnesota's the NFL team there, so we were covering them um, at the TV station I was at, and I just thought he was a magnificent addition. He was great for Detroit. He came in and made an instant impact in Minnesota, and they love the tight ends there. Um, with that being said, I, I don't. I think Sam Laporte is kind of undeniable at this point. Um, I think Kyle Pitts is a guy that could jump in, the, could be a tight end uh, one type of guy, depending on if he gets a quarterback in uh, Atlanta. Kyle Pitts is a guy that has the physical gifts and, you know, the system, and now they're getting, you know, they're rebuilding their staff. He's a guy that has the potential to be a tight end, number one. I also love Trey McBride. I cut him off my dynasty team last year, guys. And you talk about waiting a year or two. Give guys time to develop because – Trey McBride is a guy that I think David Njoku was the only tight end that outscored him like on a week to week basis for like the last eight games of the season. Um, and Joku's incredible. Um, I'm, I'm looking at Evan Ingram and I'm kind of like, I don't know if this was a fluke this season. Like, is he going to keep getting that many targets? Um, but as far as Hawkinson and Laporta, yeah, I'd probably go Laporta number one. Um, and I love Mark Andrews. I think he's a guy that he's been hurt this year. He'll come back next next season, be refreshed. I think, you know, he comes back next week and has a big game for the Ravens. But, yeah, I would agree. Laporta, just production mixed with upside and the situation, he'd probably be a number one. Gotcha. Johnny, do you think I'm crazy? Do you think, I, you know, Sam Laporta, am, am I just too much of a fan? No, no. I think it's a good call. You know, um, he had, Sean had him at number two. So this is a, it could be a 50-50 flip a coin. You know, it could come down to that. But – yeah, Sam Laporta, a couple years younger, um, you, you know, you might look at it if you're somebody that says, oh, he got lucky on how many touchdowns he had. Well, maybe move him down a peg. If you think that's here to stay, then I think he's the number one. I mean, uh, age considering, I, I do think that benefits him three years younger. Uh, we should. This is no surprise. It's no fluke. He did this in college. Um, he's in a great situation with Jared Goff and that fluid offense and should be at least for five more years with Goff, right? So, uh, I think that's a good call. I, in my rankings, I'd have him number one uh, in front of Hawkinson. If you told me Hawkinson outscored him next year, wouldn't be surprised. They're that close. Uh, I do think Trey McBride at number three is somebody who might be like the most explosive, most um, freakish uh, athlete, you know, maybe next to Kyle Pitts on this list. Uh, Mark Andrews definitely, you know, he could be number two, number three, depending on what how you view it. He's there for two more years. Um, 12 and a half points, uh, I want to say over the last maybe four years, at, at, you know, per game, he averages 12 and a half. So that's tough to argue. And, you know, he's only, I think, 27. So uh, to me, this is this is a great top four. That's how my top four would be. Maybe I'd go Laporta over Hawkinson, too, and um, keep Trey McBride at three. But I think this is a great top, top four. Travis Kelsey, I might move a little bit down. Um, you know, still have to consider that if, if he wins the Super Bowl, you know, it, I'll say that. Then I think there's a good chance he retires. Uh, you know, his brother's retiring. Uh, he goes out on top. I, I think that could be it for him. So, um, you know, if that's the case, he, he's off this list. So very yeah. volatile there. Kyle Pitts, I do like. I think with a new head coach, I mean, Arthur Smith, what were you doing? Kyle Pitts, Bijan Robinson, get these guys love. You know, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, now, Ninjoku kind of scares me a little bit because – he he was great, you know. Like Brandon said, those last that last stretch, last second half of the season was terrific. But I'm taking it with a grain of salt because I think Joe Flacco was a better quarterback for him. I mean, I'm not going to say that uh, he's not going to get targets with Deshaun Watson, but man, I'm not a D Deshaun Watson fan at all. You know, I I I, I said that they were going to lose that game versus the Texans just because it was it was the young guy versus old guy. Hey, C.J. Stroud, want to say hey, I'm the better Houston Texans quarterback, you know? So. I'm just man, but Sean Watson, I, I can't stand that. I don't I don't like that for Cleveland at all. I hate that they invested in him. So N Ninjoku, you know, here and now at 28, he could have a great season next year again. But uh I'm taking that with a grain of salt, you know. And I do really like um what Brandon said about number 10, Evan Ingram. Maybe I move him down. There's some guys on this list that are off this list. Um Dallas Goddard could be debated, you know, to be in this inside top 12. Luke Musgrave, I know they have uh, Tucker Craft there in Green Bay, but maybe if you're in a startup uh, dynasty league, maybe those are two names you're looking at, Musgrave and uh, Craft. You know, those are two guys off this list that I think will develop in time. Um, Jake Ferguson, to me, I, I'd move him up a little bit to 10. 
I'd go Ferguson, Komet, and then Ingram. I do think uh, Komet's a good stab there, especially if um, Fields comes back. He's just got re up to a four year deal. So Cole Komet at only 25 years old, I think, you know, he's somebody who can uh, continue to step forward. But I think it's a great list. And, uh, and I don't think you're crazy with, with uh, Laporte at number one. Nice. Good. I, I'm glad to not be crazy uh, from that. But, <laughs> you know, so you kind of hit on it here in my last question uh, for this position and, and for our uh, positions at a whole. Uh, Travis Kelsey slipping down there to six. And you said, you know, maybe you should go lower uh, because of the potential of retiring. Um, do you see him as a possible a good value now in startups and trades and, and for both of you guys who are the players uh, at tight end that you think are the the good value to to grab uh because they're they're falling down the list but hey they could have one or maybe two really good seasons left ahead of them um we'll, we'll start with you johnny uh, i do think that kelsey will be at a discount i don't know if i'm gobbling up that discount because it he's 34 right now. He, he's only getting older. I mean, uh, maybe he finds a fountain of youth one more year. And, and I mean, he didn't do bad this year, right. But just not the Travis Kelsey uh, usual. Um, I do think that he's somebody that if you're in a dynasty and, and he does play one more year, you have to think that you're only getting that one year. It's probably a solid year, you know, but maybe someone you take a pair of Travis Kelsey with Musgrave, you know, you wait for a year until Musgrave kind of blossoms or, Tucker Craft, both of them, you know, you take all three and wait till see who rises in Green Bay and who goes, you know. So I think that's a, a risky pick, but I think if you protect yourself with some young guys, um, Cole Komet at number 11, if you get him that late, I think at only 25 years old at Dynasty, that's a safe play, you know. And, and Jake Ferguson, I like him a lot too. I think his potential may be even higher, um, but I'd like to see – some stability there you know i think he proved that he's their tight end one but they have also schoonwalker who i think they draft in the second round uh so you know he he's high upside but high risk too um tight ends you know we've seen guys like gary barnage come in and have a year or two and kind of fizzle out so um this is a volatile position but i do think some of these younger guys if you can build on a kyle pitts you know i'd definitely take kyle pitts over travis kelsey to start up I think um, these young guys, you know, even Dalton Kincaid, I mean, uh, if he continues to do what he did, I think the sky's the limit for these young tight ends. And we're getting at a point where, you know, you don't have to have the the fifth year tight end to make a splash. Look at Sam Laporta. You know, he's a he's a rookie. Trey McBride, second year, basically rookie. Dalton Kincaid, rookie. So a lot of these guys, to, to me, uh, are changing the revolution of how we see the tight end position. Me, I, I wouldn't draft the, you know, the Hawkinsons, the Laportas. I'm waiting a while because, uh, like time has shown us now, there's guys that can be David and Joku, you know, picked up throughout the season. Evan Ingram taken late. Um, so, I, to me, I'm waiting on this position. I do like, you know, if you want to uh, go even later, a Dallas Goddard and a Luke Musgrave, something like that. But, um, yeah, I think a good pairing, you know, if you want to roll with someone older like Kelsey, go with someone younger. Nice. What about you, Brandon? What's the values you're seeing on this list uh, and possibly, you know, someone that's left off that, you know, you're targeting for startups or uh, trades? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dallas Goddard is my tight end in um, Dynasty. So that would absolutely be a guy that I would be looking at that's not on this list that missed some games, but that is in an ideal situation with Jalen Hurts, who isn't going anywhere. You know, they can't really key, up, key in on him because they've got A.J. Brown as well as Devontae Smith out there. So he's going to get looks down the middle of the field. He'd absolutely be a guy that I would probably take before Travis Kelsey right now for talking today. Um, you know, um, the two guys that I think could make the biggest jumps are David Njoku. I think, you know, um, he's a guy that is still young enough to continue to get better and give you more and more. He's been that physical specimen that we've kind of been waiting to break out. And he's had some flashes. This season, it seemed like he put it all together, at least for 10 games. I think with a healthy Deshaun Watson, if they continue to build that rapport. And Joku at nine is a guy that I could see as high as six. Um, and then another guy that I love who Johnny touched on is Dalton Kincaid, who's a rookie, first year starting, was a safety net for Josh Allen, has one of the best QB situations, has one of the best tight end situations where he is the guy. He's playing a lot of snaps and – 
he gets a lot of looks. So that's definitely – Kincaid is a guy that I think could be as high as three. He could make a Trey McBride type of leap. Like, he's that good. Um, I'm looking at Mark Andrews, and just with the emergence of Isaiah Likely, I don't know if he stays at four. You know, Likely, we saw last night the touchdown grab he had. Like, the kid's a specimen. He's a dude. Um, so I think he's a guy that they're going to have to continue to get looks to that could take away from Andrews. But just looking at it, I think the biggest risers could be Njoku and Kincaid. Uh, Value-wise, I'm definitely looking at a guy like Dallas Goddard or Cole Komet, who's just old reliable, but he's just not so old. Gotcha. Yeah, no, those are great names. And uh, definitely, uh, the I, I really like this uh, list, this position. Um, you know, obviously, you know, look, looking at Sam Laporta getting jumping up to one in my list, but hey, this is opinions and and everything. And so for those that have gotten this far watching this video, uh, if you want to get more information about uh, each of these lists and positions, go to idpguys.org, read the articles, the top 12 list articles, and that culminates in a uh, top 100 uh, article and, and get the breakdown of these guys and, um, you know, where where they are in the position everything and be sure to become a subscriber and use that code uh, I, uh, idp plus pod to get 10 percent off of your subscription um but as we we kind of wrap up here i just for you guys um wanted to ask like of all of these positions we've talked about so far between idp and offense like who is your um, your biggest target? You know, just just name one guy that you're just like leaving this uh, the series that you want people to know about. And I'm gonna kick that off to uh, Brandon first. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a, a lot of talent going around. Um, I, I don't necessarily say this is a guy that you should know about per se, but I think a guy, like a guy that I traded a second round pick for in my dynasty, I think Rashad White is a guy that takes that next step um, next season. He finally got to prove that he was the guy this year and he was a three down back. I think, you know, he's a guy that will continue to get better. He's like 24 years old. I think he's got a chance to be a top 10 running back next season. if They continue to improve that line and get him some more explosive plays. Um, yeah, that, that'd probably be my guy, honestly, that I left off the running back list um, that I really like, that I've personally invested in. So I would recommend people investing in him um, as Tampa Bay continues to figure out their offense. But Rashad White, I think, is due for a, a breakout, breakout year next year. Nice, yeah. And, uh, and Brandon, just uh, one more time, remind everyone where they can find you uh, and the content you're putting out. Definitely, definitely appreciate everybody that's been rocking with me ever since we started this thing. You can find me on all social media at Brandon Lee TV. Uh, definitely check out my YouTube channel where we host two podcasts, like I mentioned before, the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast, the Dukes of the Gridiron podcast, giving you the biggest headlines in a new flavorful way with sports, culture, entertainment, and everything in between, baby. So check it out. Nice. All right, Johnny, uh, to you also. So, you know, sign off, give your, uh, you know, where people can find you and uh, what, what you're producing right now. But also, what's that one player that uh, you want everyone to walk away from these two episodes just knowing about? Well, uh, I will say this, somebody that we didn't talk about, but you're going to have to keep in touch, uh, not forget about this name of, of, you know, where they land potentially if they don't resign. At 28 years old, someone we did not talk about or was not on this list was Nick Chubb. So I think he could be an X factor, you know, depending on where he lands. If he, especially if he gets resigned, that's best case scenario. But um, don't forget about Nick Chubb. You know, he's coming off that bad injury, and we're down yeah. on him because the, you know, there might be complications. But somebody that can easily be on this list, don't forget about. I definitely like Rashad White too, um, and also Josh Jacobs, right? Somebody that uh, if he gets resigned there, don't forget about him. So. Yeah. The running backs is it's a, it's nice to see some um, fluidity there. You know, there's some even tandems in the NFL now, so that's nice too. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of value, and uh, I do think it, another name that we forgot to talk about doesn't deserve to be on top 12 tight ends, but I think in dynasty could definitely be there if you're in a startup. You might want to look at Michael Mayer. I think he's a good stab. You know, for the duration of his career, kind of like look like a baby Gronk coming out of college there. 
at Notre Dame. So those are two names that we left off the list that intrigue me and uh, are building blocks, especially in Dynasty coming up. Nice. And, and where can – Go ahead, oh, well, no, no, I was just going to say, man, totally with Josh Jacobs and Nick Chubb definitely could have been on my list personally. That was hard. Um, the thing with Chubb, man, like you said, that injury, he's had torn ACLs before, but at this age, how does he come back? Jerome yeah, 1,400 right. yards from scrimmage this year. Do they just get rid of the young guy? I don't know. And then, you know, Jacobs had a down year this year. Where does he end up? From a talent standpoint, though, absolutely could have put those guys on the list. It's just serious injury. Not sure where Jacobs ends up. 800 yards this year. I, I don't know, man, but the talent is there. Right. Tough. Yeah. Hey, that's tough to do top 12. You know, top, top uh, 16, 18, a little bit easier. But that top 12, yeah. people get snubbed. It's brutal. <laughs> Fun. So we, we gave you guys a good starting point, but don't let it finish here. Make your own rankings. Yeah. Look through top 25, top 50s. Find some diamonds in the rough. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So where can people find you, Johnny? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Johnny Freak in F1. Um, follow me. Give me uh, clout. You know, I need it right now, and uh, I'll get you some love back. There we go. All right. You, you can find me on uh, Twitter as well at Nate Cheat. Uh, generally behind the scenes, but I do uh, make appearances for some of these shows. And I've been having a great time with you gentlemen and talking about these players, these positions. And I'm looking forward to our next video, which is going to be combining them all together, seeing where, you know, your QBs, your wide receivers, your linebackers rank together. So definitely make sure and stick around, subscribe to the YouTube channel, make sure to hit the little bell uh, so that you get notified whenever you, uh, whenever we post a new video, we've got content coming out all the time. Uh, we're, we're about to start a new series on mock draft Monday. So Monday mornings, we're going to have mock drafts, uh, different types like quarter, one QB IDP only mixtures, rookies, the, the whole gamut. And that's going to be uh, a series that, that'll go through the off season. Um, you know, and then we've got some of our uh, other in-season guys coming out for the off-season. We'll have Dynasty Rankings show with uh, Steve, IDP Hunter. Uh, just a lot of great, you know, longer form content as well as uh, shorts. You know, um, we've been putting out some great shorts for the playoff run, for betting. And we just recently put some, starting to put some stuff out for injuries. So check us out. IDP Plus on YouTube and uh 2024 like we're we're coming for it we're putting out our our best stuff and really excited for where the future is going uh with this brand and this channel so with that um, one more thing i just one last thing because i know we mentioned players that you should know about my last one complete brain fart definitely keaton mitchell at running back if you want somebody low value the guy mm -hmm. to look out for i was on him all year too man there we go. There's the the last bit of wisdom. Thank That's you, Brandon. It. <laughs> and with that, out. <laughs> we are out. I'll see you guys for the next one. Thanks, Nate. Thanks, Brandon. Have a good Appreciate one. You guys. Thank you for watching this IDP guys video. If you like this content and you want more fantasy football content, click here. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos to help you master your IDP league, click here to subscribe.